Hey there! Today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I typically upload, but still keeping within the theme of my channel, which is Smart Luxury Shopping. This year, I'm doing a low buy year, and in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how I'm setting up my low buy year, and I will give you three simple tips you can follow for a successful low buy year. If you're new to this channel, welcome. This is Alula LV, and if you're returning from watching another video of mine, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. This video is a little bit different because most of the subscribers and viewers that come to my channel come here for the new release videos that I put out. I do a lot of videos previewing new releases coming out at Louis Vuitton. I also like to look at what's new from other fashion houses as well. So it may seem a bit counterintuitive to put out all these videos showing you all these beautiful things that are coming out from luxury fashion houses, and then also say, but I'm doing a low buy year and this is how you cannot buy things. But the theme of this channel is smart luxury shopping. I love luxury fashion, particularly luxury bags but I also can't afford to buy every single thing that comes out. And I know a lot of other people are trying to be more mindful with their consumption in 2023. Over on my Instagram page, I recently uh, did a poll in my Instagram stories asking viewers if they planned on doing a no buy or low buy year, or if they planned on just purchasing as they normally do and most people said like an overwhelming majority of people said that they are either doing a low buy year or they are planning to be more mindful with their purchases in 2023. I will walk you through the reasons why I'm doing my low buy year, how I'm setting it up as I go through these three tips that I'm going to share with you for how you can also have a successful low buy year. Tip number one where you absolutely have to start is figuring out your why. Why are you doing a low buy year? And figuring out your why is essential to moving on to step number two. Personally, I recommend getting your phone or a computer or a notebook and writing down all of your reasons why and being as specific as possible. Don't just say, I want to save money, I don't want to spend as much. Really dig down into the reasons why. I'm going to share with you my reasons why and there's a few this year. Number one is I've purchased a lot over the last two years and my tipping point was actually in December. I purchased three handbags over the span of a month. The first weekend in December, I got a Morel tote from Louis Vuitton. I also purchased a Epi Leather St. Cloud. This is a discontinued design but I saw it at a local consignment store. I loved it and just felt the need that I had to get it because I admired this bag for a long time. I don't see it very often, especially in great condition. So I purchased that bag in mid-December. And then finally on, I think it was New Year's Day, I purchased a third bag, a vintage Cartier bag from Rebecca B Luxury and I bought it because she was having a sale. It was such a great deal. I loved this bag, so I bought it. But three bags within the span of four weeks is a lot for me, and it got to the point where I thought to myself that I have all these bags. I purchased a lot earlier in the year. I just got three more bags, and I need to slow down and enjoy what I have and actually use the bags that I've just bought before I go out and buy more. Another reason is financial. We have, my husband and I have decided to put money into home improvements this year. We have a few specific projects we're looking to get done with our house. And as I'm sure a lot of you know, 
home improvements can be very expensive. So for me personally, I would rather invest more money into my home this year as opposed to luxury purchases. So that's reason number two. And again, when you're going through these reasons, be as specific as possible. So if you have a certain financial goal, something that you want to save up for, figure out how much that financial goal will cost. Or if it's, for example, say you have a debt and you're looking to pay off that debt, how much is that? And really getting into those specifics will help you figure out the rules, and that is tip number two. There are no universal rules for how to do a low buy year. Your low buy year is 100% within your control. You need to decide what items or what category of items you're going to include in your low buy. Also, what are your limitations for those items? Is it a budgetary limitation? Is it a number of item? limitation. I'm going to give you my rules as an example and I'll talk through a few tips along the way for setting up your rules. Number one is the items or category of items. So again, this needs to be your problem area. For me, it was buying too many luxury items within too short of a time frame where I couldn't enjoy those items that much. For my personal low buy rules, I'm including all luxury and designer items. So the luxury houses, mostly Louis Vuitton, but anything along the lines of Chanel, Hermes, or Dior, all of that would be included, all those luxury brands, as well as contemporary designers, brands like Coach or Longchamp are two of my personal favorites. So all designer brands, all items that they offer are included in my low buy year. So not just designer handbags, but also clothing, shoes, and any other accessories that those brands sell. All of that is included in my low buy year. My limitation for the low buy year is one item per month. And the limitation really needs to be tailor-made to you, whether you have a financial goal, you may want to set a budgetary limitation or some other limitation that makes sense for you to achieve your why and achieve your specific end goal. I've decided to do one item per month. It doesn't matter what that item is. It could be one handbag, it could be one pair of shoes, it could be one small other good. It doesn't matter how much it costs, one item. The only exception is beauty items. I'm not including beauty items in that one item per month rule. However, for beauty, I've decided that I'm only going to buy something new to replace an item that I've run out of. So if I run out of my mascara, I can purchase a new tube of mascara. I'm not going to include that as my one item per month. It's just going to be a replacement of something that I've run out of. I have a lot of beauty items, so I don't think I'm going to have to purchase a lot this year. I'll probably just repurchase something more towards the end of the year as my products might start to expire. So that's the only exception is beauty. And one tip that I actually got from another YouTuber, Hannah Louise, she's great if you're interested in no buy or low buy years. She's been doing this a long time and I watched a few of her videos for inspiration as well as um, trying to figure out how I wanted to set up my low buy year. So I'll link to her channel below, but a great tip I got from her when setting up your rules is also think about any exceptions that might come up throughout the year. For example is if you go on vacation and you typically buy something on your vacation, is that included in the no buy year? Is that an exception? Think about how you want to handle that situation before you get to it and set it up in your rules. So I thought that was a great tip. And I tried to think about that in my rules. So if I buy something and I return it, I don't get like one extra item back. I bought it, it didn't work out, I returned it. 
that was my one item for the month even though I didn't end up with it I can start again the next month and buy something new but that's that's all I got for that month even though I returned it the beauty items I already talked about how I'm handling that when I go on vacation, I'm not giving myself any extra allowance. I still get one item per month, no matter what that item is. And like I said before, if a month goes by that I don't buy something, then that's it for the month. I can't carry it over and buy two things in March because I didn't buy anything in February. Now that you know why you're doing this, your very specific rules that you will be sticking to for the year, the final tip and the final step I have is to get your support system in place at the very beginning that you start your low buy year. For your support system, the number one person is yourself. You need to support yourself in your own rules Make sure not only, actually I should have mentioned this under tip two, not only do your rules need to be specific, but they need to be achievable. Don't think of this as a low buy challenge. Just think of it as something that you're going to do. I'm going to do a low buy year. And one thing I would recommend, especially if you're doing a whole year, don't think of the entire time frame in one big chunk break it down into manageable chunks and only think about that specific moment in time at once. So what I mean is if you're doing a low buy year, don't think about it as a whole year at once. Think about it just on a month by month basis. We're in February right now. All I'm thinking about is what do I need to do this month to achieve my goals and my rules? I'm not worried about the entire rest of the year. What do I need to do this month? Don't think about the whole rest of the year because that can be really overwhelming. Just take it moment by moment and step by step. So that's number one, how you can support yourself. Number two is having an accountability partner. And I find that this works best if it's somebody you know in real life. It could be your spouse, your partner, a parent, a child, a good friend, but make sure you have somebody that you can tell you're doing a low buy year and what your rules are, you know, maybe talk with them about it, how you're feeling throughout the years you're going through it. They could check in with you from time to time and talk about how it's going, how you're sticking to your rules. So having someone that you can be accountable to makes a huge difference. Finally, I have to recommend if you're doing a low buy or a no buy for financial or emotional reasons, it is really helpful and I would strongly, strongly recommend seeking professional guidance to help you through your low buy or no buy year. If you are doing this because you feel that you have an unhealthy relationship to shopping, definitely seek out professional help. Look for a certified therapist that you can work with to work through some of those emotions and some self-growth while you're going through this year. If you're doing this because your shopping or your purchasing habits have led to debt or other financial distress, of course, please do seek out professional financial assistance from a certified financial advisor. So if you fall into that category of having an unhealthy relationship with shopping, or having financial distress, definitely seek out professional assistance from a certified professional. You will not regret it. If you are interested in hearing from me throughout my low buy year, how it's going, anything I've learned, any struggles I've had along the way, definitely comment below and let me know because I will definitely be happy to make more videos on how it's going throughout the year and also a year-end summary. And if you are planning to do 
a no buy or a low buy year or just be more mindful with your purchases this year, comment below. I think it would be really great to start a conversation and support each other. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do consider subscribing and liking this video if you enjoyed this topic. And don't forget to come back every Wednesday and Friday for new videos. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye now.